first Sunday in Lent, traditionally a time to mortify the flesh through abstinence, fasting and prayer, designed to bring us more in line with God's will. You may be required, for example, to abstain from sugar or cheese or chocolate, or replace your roast dinner for a less than scrumptious split pea soup on this first Sunday in Lent, presumably without fried bacon bits, just in case this might make that vomit green meal slightly more palatable. I don't know about you, but I'm feeling pretty much like lockdown has provided us all ample levels of abstinence already. Thank you very much. No travel, no holidays, no friends, no restaurants, no gym, no movies, serious levels of physical and mental health challenges. I think I'll be giving that pea super miss. In fact, the only thing you may want to consider giving up this Lent is your New Year's resolution. Our passage today is reminiscent of a family feud. Peter pulls Jesus aside and tells him to pull himself toward himself. He is not going to Jerusalem to die, but to win, to take the throne of the Messiah. Jesus realizes that Peter's tantrum is being witnessed by the rest of the family and puts on his best parental voice to scold the helpless disciple. What precisely is going on here? To understand, let us turn to some recent scholarship from the post-colonial schools of theology that try to locate Jesus in the context of the Roman Empire. Empire, says Council for World Mission General Secretary Colin Cowan, is, and I quote, a coming together of economic, cultural, political and military power in our world today, an encompassing global reality, serving, protecting and defending the interests of the powerful, corporations, nations, elites and privileged people, while imperiously excluding and even sacrificing humanity, exploiting creation. It is a pervasive spirit of destruction, self-interest and even greed. The worship of money, goods and possessions, the gospel of consumerism, proclaimed through powerful propaganda and religiously justified, believed and followed, the colonization of consciousness, values and notions of human life by the imperial logic, a spirit lacking in compassion, justice and showing contemptuous regard for the gifts of creation and the household of life. The absolute genius of Jesus, according to this field of scholarship, is that Jesus was able not only to see right through the self-aggrandizing propaganda of the Roman Empire, he was also able to resist the temptation to collude with it or to believe that working from within empire would, would be enough to bring about the kingdom of God. Jesus had faced that temptation in the desert and, and he had said no. Jesus knew that one cannot use the system of empire to overcome that system of empire. Something else entirely is required. That something else is what he called ecclesia or church. Peter, on the other hand, seemed to be caught up in a misunderstanding of Jesus' mission. Peter was stuck within an old interpretation of Messiah as the king that would come to overthrow the oppressor by means of the sword and to reclaim the throne of David. In some sense, you can hear the frustration in Jesus' response. Oh, come on, Peter. I don't have much time left and you still don't get it? You think that replacing empire is the way to go? You want me to be some kind of mini Caesar with all wreaths of empire upon my brow to sit upon my throne? Oh, get behind me, Satan. Jesus then turns to the disciples and explains the consequences of following this new path. Unless you stop playing by empire's rules, unless you are prepared to face death, and not just any death, a horrific death of crucifixion that is so favoured by the Roman Empire, you are really not ready to be ecclesia, to be the church. This is a deeply challenging text, an interpretation of that text for all of us. Because to be honest, we are all caught up within the assumptions and the practices of empire. We are all still caught up in the global system that serves, protects and defends the interests of the powerful corporations, nations, elites and privileged people. 
while imperiously excluding and sacrificing humanity. We see this reality being played out right now in the terribly uneven access to COVID vaccines across the world. Winnie Bian Nyema decries the COVID vaccine apartheid that sees rich and influential nations standing right at the front of the queue, while poor nations are relegated to the back, some even having to pay double the price per dose compared with European nations. After months of attempts to secure their vaccines, the Palestinian Ministry of Health last week received 2,000 of their 5,000 doses pledged by Israel to the Palestinian Authority. These doses were administered to the healthcare workers and those who are battling on the very front lines against coronavirus that has already claimed 2,000 lives across the Palestinian territories. Despite being a world leader in its vaccination rollout, Israel has refused to include more than 5 million Palestinians living under Israeli occupation. Israel argues that the Palestinian Authority should be responsible for vaccinating its own citizens. But under international law, Israel as the occupier is compelled to provide essential health care like COVID-19 vaccines to the Palestinian population under its control. This is an example of how empire operates in Dr. Cowan's words, as it shows a staggering lack of compassion, as it justifies through powerful propaganda its enrichment of the elites at the expense of the oppressed and the poor. The PA has now received its first shipment of the Russian Sputnik V vaccine with 10,000 doses, just enough to inoculate the rest of its healthcare workers. What can we do then? to pick up our cross in a time when the systems of empire are so incredibly powerful and all-pervasive throughout the world. What we in Commitment for Life emphasize over everything else is prayer. We ask that people pray that God shines the light on the powers and the principalities of empire so that ordinary people can see through the propaganda and the lies and see the system of empire for what these are, truly are. They bring nothing but oppression and death. Second, we ask people to become activists in whatever way they can, even in small ways. You can do so much as individuals and as congregations. You can listen to somebody preach a sermon on injustices. You can form small Bible groups to study these issues. You can make a noise. You can lobby your MP. You can create a, a podcast, you can have a, a, a YouTube channel where you talk about these sorts of things. You can step out of the destructive patterns of, of behavior that we are all caught up in. So for example, you can become more eco-aware. Most importantly, you can tell the truth. And then finally, we ask people to subvert the monetary system of empire, and we can do that through all sorts of ways, but particularly through generosity. There are so many brilliant ways in which we can share the wealth that has come to us because for at least some of us, we are the unwitting beneficiaries of the system of economics. For example, you can support organizations that focus on justice in Israel and Palestine, such as Christian Aid, MAP, Jews for Palestinian Right to Return, the journalist Jonathan Cook, and so many others. And so, prayers, be an activist, and be generous. Wouldn't that be a brilliant way to mark this time of Lent in 2021? God bless you and keep you and guide you in Jesus' name. Amen.